Welcome to Help Your Mouth. In this video, we will do the arithmetic review on performing the following operations with common fractions. This topic will be very useful for students who are taking math for nursing and also for students who are enrolled in the arithmetic courses. So, in problem A, we need to perform the following operations. We will divide 40,000 over 10,000 times 30 over 1 and times 2.5 times 12.5. In this situation, we always need to look first if we can clear the zeros. So let's look at what zeros we can reuse. So we have here 40,000 over 10,000. We can cross out 10 zero, uh, four zeros by reducing both fractions by 10,000. Now, let's look at the second case. So, at the last fraction, we can observe that we have a decimal. And, of course, division of the decimal by decimal is not convenient. That's why we want to look how we can clear decimals. And we know if we have in the fraction two decimal, we only can make the whole numbers by shifting them, decimal point, the same number of places. So, we will shift one place in the numerator, one place in the denominator, and we will try to rewrite what we have right now. So we have 4 over 1 times 30 over 1 times 25 over 125. So now we can look that in the third fraction we again can reduce 25 and 125. 25 can fit into 125 one, uh, five times. So therefore, we also can look at what you have right now in the numerator and denominator. And you also can notice that 30 and 5 could be reduced. We will divide both sides by 5. So 30 divided by 5 and 6. So let's look what is left. We have 4 over 1. And we have 6 over 1. And we have already 1 over 1. So we understand that this is 1 already. But we also, in general, multiply the common fractions across. So we will multiply all the numerators, 4 times 6 times 1, over 1 times 1 times 1, which gives us 24 over 1, or 24. So the final answer for this problem is 24. Let's look at the example number B. In example number B, we need to multiply 6 60 over 1 times 500 over 50 times 1 over 1,000 and times 116 over 1. So don't rush to multiply across right away. The main point in this case, we want to reduce as much as possible. And after that, if we need to complete the remaining operations using the long division, that we will do it in the very, very end. First, let's start again with clearing zeros. If we will take a look at zeros, we can try to clear one zero in the denominator against one zero in the numerator. We also can notice that in the numerator we have 500 and 1,000. We understand that 500 can fit 1,000 twice. So we can reduce this part as 1 and 2. Is there anything that we can divide right now probably to reduce? Probably yes. We can try to reduce also 2 and 116. So if we will reduce 2 and 116, it gives us what? 58. Let's take a look what is the remaining part. The remaining part is 6 times 58 and divided by 5. So in this case, you can reduce as, uh, probably you cannot reduce any more. So All right, so now we can multiply 58 times 6. So 6 times 8, 48. Let's carry 4. And 6 times 5, 30. And 4, 34. 348. That's our number in the numerator, 348. And now we have to divide that by 5. So let's try to divide 348 by 5. So obviously we will fit 5 into 34, which is 6. 
So 5 fits into 34 6 times, we subtract 30, bring down 4 and then 8. Now we are going to fit 5 into 48, so that would be 9 times. 9 times 5, 45, the difference would be 3. And after that, we observe that we finished already the whole number, so we will put the decimal point and we will drop right away the decimal point on the top of that so we can keep the same place order. So we will add zero after the decimal point and bring down that zero and that will be the six. So five times six, 30, we completed our division. So the second method that we look at, uh, we want to look at how we can use the friendly numbers like 5 and 2 or 4 and 25, which actually gives us something which is power of 10, because 5 times 2 is 10 and 4 times 25 is 100. So we always look for those combinations of the numbers in denominators. Is there any way to get them, num those numbers in the denominator? Let's take a look at them. So if there are a couple of ways to start to reduce their uh, problems and therefore we will try to look in a, a different way. So what if we will cross out two zeros, one pair from 500, the second from 1000, and after that we will reduce one zero from 50 and another zero from 60. Then we also can reduce 5 and 5, it will be one and another one. So let's look at the advantage of this situation. If we will copy what is left, then we have 6 times 1 times another one and times 116 in the numerator. And we have 1 times 1 times 10 and again times 1 in the denominator. So if we will multiply 116 by 6 in the numerator, so it gives us 36 carry 6, 6 times 1, 6 and 3, 9, and 6 times another 1, it's again 6, so we have 696 in the numerator divided by 10. And why that was the advantage of this situation? We have 10 in the denominator, it means we have to divide by 10. And to divide by 10, we need to use the shortcut. We are going to move the decimal point just one place to the left. So the final answer will be 69.6 and we could avoid that hard long division. In example number C, there might be the situation that probably will not be able to simplify so nicely, therefore we will take a look how to complete that problem and of course we will need to round to the nearest tenth. So let's start with reducing again. We probably can look at 20 and 60 which fits into 60 three times. We also can start to reduce zeros, for example, in 50 and 250, and then we can complete reducing 5 and 25. 5 divided by 5, 5, 25 divided by 5, another 5. So if we will look one more time at that, we also can notice that 5 and 1,000 can be also reduced. We have 1 and 200. So let's see what is left. We have 200 times 1 times 1 and again times 1 divided by 1 times 1 times 1 and 3. In other words, we have to complete only one operation. We have to perform the long division of 200 by 3. So let's do that. 200 divided by 3. Let's drop the decimal point in the end of the whole number and we will also line up the decimal point in the quotient. And we will try to fit 3 into 20. So that will be 6 times. 6 times 3 gives us 18. We will subtract that number and the difference will be 2. Bring down the next 0. So again we have 20. That means that again we can fit 3 6 times minus 18. So that will be 2. So we can continue our division and the question is where do we need to stop because we see we already have repeated decimal. So that will be against 18 and we probably since we need to round to the nearest tenth, we always need to round to one more place that we assigned. 
it means we keep dividing by to the nearest hundred place so we need one more place let's add one extra zero bring it down and it's again fits six times so minus 18 the difference is two so we will call the last digit in the hundred place critical digit and this digit will determine how do we need to round since the critical digit is already greater than five then we are going to add additional one to the tenth place so therefore we are going to have our number 66.66 as rounded to 66 and 67 hundredths uh, I'm sorry at 7 tenths so the answer will be 66 and 7 tenths